Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebecca, and today I'll show you how to design sticker sheets for the foil quill in Silhouette Studio Designer Edition. After that, we'll be test foiling the stickers on a few different types of sticker paper from online labels. I've got a document open in Silhouette Studio here with a couple of different designs. The heart on the left is a cut file that we'll be filling in a little bit, so it will be a solid fill when it's foiled. Off of the artboard in the gray area to the left, I've made a 4x6 inch rectangle using the Draw a Rectangle tool from the far left menu. This will be the sticker sheet border. The last design that we'll be using to make a sticker is one of the wreaths from my classic wreath monogram font. I'll click to open the text style panel from the far right menu, and I'll make sure that the text tool from the far left menu is also selected before I start typing. I'll also increase the font size to 150 points. We'll be using one of the solid leaf wreath designs, which correspond to the capital letters in the font. Outline leaf wreaths like the one on the right correspond to the lowercase letters. I'll delete out the outline leaf monogram since we won't be using it, so we're just left with the design that we'll be using. Next, I'll click and drag on the artboard to select all of the designs, and then I'll go over to the far right menu and open the line style panel. I'll click on the tab with the colored lines and set the lines to black and zoom in so you'll hopefully be able to see everything better while we're working. First, we're going to fill the heart shape. I'll click to select it, then go over to the far right menu and open the sketch panel. This option is only available in Silhouette Studio Designer Edition and above, and I recently updated Silhouette Studio so the concentric circle and spiral fill options are now available. In an earlier video, I used a grid fill technique to create the fills for my shapes, and that worked well, so you can use either the grid fill or the circle or spiral fills for this part. I'll be using the spiral fill, so I'll click on that, and when I do, you'll see the heart fill with the spiral pattern. As it is, the lines are way too wide spaced to give us good foiling results, so I'll go over to the spacing slider and slide it to the left as far as it will go. The value will be 0 .005 inches. When I do this, you'll see that the fill pattern becomes a lot tighter, and this will give us much better foiling results. I also want to mention that I attempted to scale up the shape, release the sketch effects, and scale it back down to get the pattern even denser like you do when you use the grid fill pattern technique, but doing that either really slowed down my Silhouette Studio software or crashed it completely. My computer is a few years old, but I work with large complex files in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop on a regular basis without a problem, so I think that Silhouette Studio just has trouble handling such large complex files sometimes. So I just left the spiral fill as is, and it worked out well. You also have the option to adjust the angle of the spiral, so you can play around with that to see how it affects your results. The angle that I used was 10 degrees. Next up is the high design, which is a single line sketch design. You don't have to make any adjustments to this for foiling, but since the foil quill tips are so small, I decided to add a sketch fill to the dot on the eye. I'll click the object menu at the top of the screen and select release compound pads from the dropdown while the design is selected. Boxes will appear around the individual parts of the design after I do this, and we'll just click the dot on the eye and go over to the still open sketch panel and click the spiral fill option to fill the dot. The settings are still the same as what we used for the heart design, so we won't need to make any adjustments. To finish, click and drag on the artboard to select all of the elements in the design, and press Ctrl or Command plus G on your keyboard to group everything together so you can move it around later as a single element. Next, we'll fill the wreath monogram. You can select it as is and click the spiral fill from the sketch panel to fill it, but since it's a font, there is a little bit of space to the right of the design. I want to get rid of that space so I can perfectly center the design inside the sticker border a little bit later, and to do this, I can either press Ctrl or Command plus Z on my keyboard to undo the sketch fill, or click the edit menu from the top of the screen and click undo from the dropdown. While the design is selected, click to open the object menu from the top of the screen and click Release Compound Paths from the dropdown. Then open the object menu again, and this time click Ungroup from the dropdown to ungroup the released paths. As things are now, if we used a sketch fill on the design, all of the little areas inside the loops on the letter B would be filled with the sketch fill, which we don't want. So before we do that, click and drag to select just the elements that make up the letter B, go up and open the object menu again, and this time click Make Compound Path. Now just the interior of the letter will be filled. 
Click and drag to select both the wreath and the letter, then press Ctrl or Command plus G to group them together. Now our design is ready to be filled and the additional padding on the right is gone. This does take a couple of extra minutes to do, but I think it's worth the extra time if you'll be centering the design inside another shape. Okay, now we'll just head over to the sketch panel and click the spiral fill option again to fill the design. Now we want to make the sticker shapes for the designs. I'll just be making simple circle stickers with the designs inside, so I'll go over to the far left menu and click to open the draw and ellipse tool. Press shift while clicking and dragging on the artboard to create a perfect circle. Our circle will be 1.25 inches. First we'll make the heart sticker, so I'll click and drag the heart down into the circle shape. Then I'll click and drag one of the corner handles on the heart shape to scale it down so it'll better fit inside the sticker. Click and drag on the artboard to select both the circle and heart, then go over to the far right menu and click to open the transform panel. Use the horizontal and vertical align options to center the heart inside the circle. Centering it vertically actually put the heart a little too far up, so I'll just click to select it and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge it down until it looks better centered. Next, click to select just the circle and press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it. Press Ctrl or Command plus V again to paste another copy. And we'll use the copies to make the sticker borders for the other two designs. But before I do that, I'll go back over and click and drag to select the heart sticker and press Ctrl or Command plus G to group the elements together so I can move it around as one piece. I'll repeat the scaling, centering, and grouping process for the other two designs, and after that our sticker designs are finished. Now we want to create our sticker sheets. So I'll zoom out and click and drag the 4 by 6 inch rectangle that I created earlier onto the artboard. I made the rectangle this size since I'll be using the 4 by 6 inch foil quill foil sheets for foiling, but if you have another size foil sheet or one of the foil rolls, you can make the sheet larger. Since the stickers are all the same size, you can lay out the sticker sheet with whatever combination of designs you'd like. I'll make rows of the same design, so first I'll click and drag the heart sticker down into the rectangle. Then I'll press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it, and I'll drag the copy over to the right. Repeat the copy and paste again to make a third sticker, and drag that over to the far right. Now I'll click and drag to select just the heart stickers, and I'll use the horizontal and vertical align options in the still open transform panel to align the row of stickers. After that, I'll go down to the spacing area in the panel and click the horizontal spacing option to align the stickers so there's exactly the same amount of space between all three. The row is just a little too large for this sticker sheet, so while the stickers are still selected, I'll drag one of the corner handles inward to scale it down just a bit. I'll make note of the width so we can adjust the other stickers later. The width of this row is 3.789 inches. We'll repeat this process for the other sticker designs and we'll be able to fit four rows of stickers total on the sheet, so in this case I made a second row of the high stickers. After the sheet is laid out, I grouped each row of stickers and then I'll click and drag to select just the rows and go over to the transform panel and click the vertical spacing option to adjust the vertical spacing so there's the same amount of space between each row. Next, press Ctrl or Command plus G while all of the rows are still selected so everything is grouped. Then click and drag to select everything and use the horizontal and vertical align options in the transform panel to center align the stickers perfectly inside the sticker sheet. Press Ctrl or Command plus G again while everything is selected so the whole sticker sheet can be moved around as a single element. Now that we're finished with the sticker sheet, it's a good time to save the file so you can use it again later. I'll save mine to my computer and it'll be saved as a studio file. I'll be test foiling the stickers with both the fine tip and standard tip foil quill, so I'll copy the sticker sheet, paste the copy, and drag that over to the right. The sticker sheet on the left will be foiled with the fine tip, and the one on the right with the standard tip. We'll be controlling what is being foiled and or cut with Silhouette Studio's cut by line color feature, and in order to foil with the different tips separately, we'll need to adjust the line color for the designs on the foil sheet on the right, so the software sees them as separate from the designs on the left. So first we'll click to ungroup the sheet on the right using the ungroup option from the object menu at the top of the screen. You'll have to ungroup several times to separate the foil design elements from the sticker cut lines. Okay, once everything's ungrouped, Press shift on your keyboard while clicking just the sticker designs to select them all. 
Then go over to the far right menu and open the Line Style panel and click the tab with the colored lines. You can choose pretty much any line color for this as long as it's not black or red since the black is already the line color that's set for the designs on the other sheet and red is the color of all the sticker cut lines. I just chose the shade of gray. Now we'll click and drag to select all of the elements on the sticker sheet and press Ctrl or Command plus G to group everything together again. It's a good time to do a quick save here so the new adjustments are saved for whenever you want to use the sticker sheets again. I almost forgot to do one more thing here to complete the file setup, and this is important. We want to make sure that the cut lines for the sticker sheets are a different color than the cut lines for the individual stickers since they'll be cut with different blade settings. So select everything and ungroup until the sticker sheet borders are separate from the rest of the elements. You may need to ungroup a couple of times to get to this point. Next, select just the sticker sheet cut lines, then set the lines to a different color than the individual sticker cut lines using the line style panel. I chose a shade of blue. Now I'll regroup the individual sticker sheets and do another save on the file. This could take a minute or two since the file is pretty complex. After the file saves, click the send tab on the top right of the screen, then click the line tab. You'll see when we do this that we have four different rows, each of which corresponds to one of the line colors in the file. The rows with the blue and red boxes will be cut with a blade, so we'll do those last. The black and gray rows will be foiled with the foil quill. I'll be using the left tool holder to do everything, so I'll leave the tool number for all of the rows on the red circle. Next, we'll adjust the settings for each row. For material type, I'll choose white sticker paper just to give me some starter settings. I'm using Online Labels brand sticker papers today and they're a little bit thinner than the Silhouette brand sticker papers. I'll pop up a list of the settings that I used for each row plus settings that I used to cut the different Online Labels sticker papers. Okay, now that we've adjusted all of the settings, we're ready to send the file to the machine. I'll foil first, and first up is the fine tip foil quill. So I'll uncheck the boxes in every row except the row with the black square since this is the row that corresponds to the designs on the left sheet. When I send the file to the machine, it will only work with the row that's checked and will ignore everything else. The machine will do a carriage return when it's finished with each row, which will allow us to remove the foil sheets when the time comes. Before I click the send button, let's head over to the machine and set things up. Okay, I'm over at the machine and today we'll be testing the matte white, glossy white, and clear laser sticker papers from online labels. My fine tip foil quill has been heating up while I've been working on designing the sticker sheets, so it's ready to go. I'll load the glossy white sticker paper onto a mat, remove the heat shield from under the foil quill, and tape foil sheets on each side of the sheet to line up with the two sheets of sticker designs. I'm using the dark blue and purple foils from the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Peacock Variety Pack for this. The dark blue foil will represent the fine tip, and the purple the standard tip. I'm hoping that these darker foils will be easier for you to see in the video. Next, I'll load the mat into the machine, head over to the computer, and click the send button to send the black row to the machine. It took about 25 minutes for the foil quill to finish each sticker sheet, so about 50 minutes total for both sheets. When the machine is finished with the black row, I'll switch out the foil quill with the standard tip and allow it to heat up for at least 10 minutes. While it's heating up, I'll go into Silhouette Studio, uncheck the row with the black box, and check the row with the gray box since that corresponds to the right sticker sheet. Then once the foil quill has had time to heat up, I'll click the send button to send the row to the machine for foiling. About 25 minutes later, it's finished with the row. I'll unplug and remove the foil quill from the tool holder, and now we need to remove both foil sheets in preparation for cutting. If I had to do this over, I'd move the sticker sheets lower on the page to make it easier to remove the tape, but it worked out well this way too. The only pieces of tape that were a little bit tricky to remove were the pieces at the top of the page. Now I'll load an auto blade into the tool holder, head back over to the computer, uncheck the gray box row, and check the red box row, which corresponds to the individual sticker cut lines. Click send to send it to the machine. I'll be kiss cutting the stickers, and for the glossy sticker papers, I used a blade depth of two. For the matte white sticker paper, which is a little bit thinner, I used a blade depth of one. Kiss cutting just means that the machine will cut through the sticker sheet but won't cut through the backer paper. When the machine is finished cutting the stickers, I'll go into Silhouette Studio one more time, 
uncheck the red row box, and check the blue row box, which corresponds to the sticker sheet cut lines. Click Send to send the row to the machine. For the sticker sheets, the blade depth is much deeper because we want to cut through both the sticker sheet and backer paper. I use a blade depth usually between 5 and 8 for this, depending on how dull the blade I'm using is, and I almost always do a double cut to make sure the machine cuts cleanly the whole way through both the sticker sheet and backer paper. When the machine is finished, I can remove the individual sticker sheets, and there's enough of the sheet of sticker paper left that I can make another sheet with it later. I'll repeat the foiling and cutting process for the clear sticker paper and matte white sticker paper, and I won't make you sit through all of that, so we'll skip ahead to the results. First up are the results with the matte white sticker paper. The sheet that was foiled with the fine tip foil quill looks pretty good. In the solid fill hearts, you can definitely see the spiral lines when you look at them straight on. And there are also little areas in the center of the spiral where the foil didn't adhere well. But overall, the foil coverage is good, and you can't really see those lines in the monogram wreath too much. The single line sketch high design looks great. Very solid foiling there. But you may have noticed that the foil itself isn't that shiny. I used fairly light pressure settings, so I think that this must have more to do with the size of the tip because you can see on the sheet that was foiled with the standard tip, the foil is really nice and shiny. On this sheet, you can barely see the spiral lines even in the solid heart shape. It's most noticeable if you look at the stickers straight on, but these definitely look better than the hearts with the fine tip. There are some areas on the single line sketch stickers where the foil didn't adhere, so in that sense the fine tip did a better job with overall coverage on the single line designs, but I like the slightly thicker lines on the single line designs with the standard tip. The monogram wreath also looks great, very good foil coverage, and you can't really see the spiral fill lines. Up next are the results on the glossy white sticker paper. The cut lines on the fine tip sticker sheet were way off for some reason. They were fine on the standard tip sheet on the same sticker paper, so it must have just been a glitch in the software. Again, you can definitely see the spiral pattern lines in the solid fill heart. I just think that the fine tip is too small to give great results on larger solid fill areas like this. At an angle though, the coverage does appear more solid. On the monogram wreath, which has smaller fill areas, the foil coverage looks great. You can see some texture that's created with the spiral fill, but it's a texture as opposed to a weathered look. You can't see the actual lines created with the fill like you can on the solid fill hearts. The foil coverage on the wreaths is great, and the foil coverage on the single line designs is also very good. There was a small area on the one sticker on the right where the foil didn't adhere, but I think I may have accidentally covered that area with tape, so that was my fault, not the fault of the foil quill. On the sheet foiled with the standard tip, the solid fill hearts have pretty great foil coverage, especially this middle heart, which is just about perfect. The other two heart stickers do have small areas where you can see the spiral fill lines, but when you hold the stickers in an angle, they don't show as much. Overall, the foil coverage with the standard tip on the white glossy sticker paper is pretty awesome. The single line designs look great too, and the foil coverage on the monogram wreaths is also excellent. Finally, let's check out the results on the clear glossy sticker paper. These were by far the best results with the fine tip foil quill and the solid fill hearts. You can still see the lines from the spiral fill just a little bit, but they're much harder to see when you hold the stickers at an angle. Foil coverage on the single line sketch designs and the monogram wreaths is also excellent. Definitely the best of the three sticker papers that I tested. I also really like that when you turn the clear stickers over to the back, the design is in silver. When you use the laser printer and heat laminator foiling method for clear stickers, the back is black, and I think the silver has a nicer look that would be great if you want to stick these on clear glass or plastic. With the standard tip, the solid fill heart results were actually kind of a surprise to me. I thought that they'd look even better than the fine tip results since that's been the case with the other sticker papers, but they actually didn't look quite as good. It would take more rounds of testing to see whether this happens consistently or if it's a one-time only thing, but for this round of testing, the solid hearts definitely looked better with the fine tip. Everything else looked great though. The single line designs were nice and solid, and I think I like the slightly thicker lines here with the standard tip versus the fine tip. The monogram wreaths also had excellent foil coverage. 
I did only do one round of testing here, so further testing is required to see if these results are consistent. But in this round, the clear glossy sticker paper is the overall winner, with the most consistently excellent foil coverage for both the fine tip and standard tip foil quill. The runner up is the white glossy sticker paper, which had excellent coverage for both tips on everything except the solid fill hearts. Coming in last is the matte white sticker paper. I think the matte surface takes away some shine from the foil, especially with the fine tip, and it also shows areas with less than great foil coverage more clearly. If I had to choose one tip over another for this, I'd go with the standard tip. I like the slightly thicker lines that it gives on the single line designs, and with the exception of the solid fill hearts on the clear glossy sticker paper, the standard tip also had better results on solid fill shapes. You can find a full list of supplies used in this video in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. I hope that this video was helpful for you, and if you'd like to see more foil quill project videos, I'd love it if you'd give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.